All right, Jake, how should we kick off the new year? Um, you feeling good? I'm I feeling am, good. I'm feeling great. Yeah. Just the perfect, uh, you know, mindset to be in for terrible, I'm going to say crappy movies, right? Yes. To kick start. Yeah. So we're, we're starting off positive, but really going in negative because, because yes. the bad movie mixed with the, uh, I have like an upward mindset here. Let's have a good year. Yeah. yeah All right. Cool. Absolutely. Do you want to uh, tell tell the movie and I'll and then I'll go Rotten Tomatoes? Yeah, I'm going to do some business so, first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I'm yeah. going <laughs> to knock out some business. So if you follow us on Instagram uh, at Story Shack Pod, we did a small little giveaway for the Christmas holiday. Uh, I believe I called it our first annual belated Christmas giveaway because it was an idea first I came up with. Belated, it was kind of a long title for me. Yeah, yeah. that's Echo, kind of what I like guess. about it. It's, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, but I came up with it just late and didn't promote it well enough. I promoted it like mid-December mm-hmm. till the end. So I figured we'd do it like a belated Christmas gift, give people time to join and follow us. Uh, but if you were one of our followers, you were entered into a drawing to get a $50 gift card. Uh, I originally said it was an AMC gift card, but AMCs aren't everywhere, and we have listeners that are all over the country, maybe even the world. <laughs> so, uh, though this contest was limited to people in the U.S., uh, <laughs> you know, stipulations, Just the legal. Caveat. Yeah, I got oh, yeah, a lawyer yeah. whispering in my ear. Yeah. So my friend Brent, who follows us, was actually our winner. And uh, he won a $50 gift card to a local theater there. And he's also a co-host of a podcast called the Poptimistic Podcast. Uh, They kind of talk about everything nerdy as well as, you know, mental health and those kind of things. And shout out to them. Shout out to Brent. Thanks for uh, following us and listening. And yeah, maybe we'll do a collab one of these days. Who knows? Clab would, uh, that seems fun for sure. Yeah. I would definitely be down. Uh, my, my second bit of business and I'm pretty angry about it and I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to leave this all last year. So I'm going to let it out now so that it's out of my system for this next year. Get it year. out, baby. Get it out. Why with the ever increasing prices of theater tickets and concessions, would you go to a movie theater and text and answer your phone. The guy next to me literally answered his phone in the middle of a movie <laughs> and then looked at me like I was the problem. You're the crazy person. Yeah. I feel a little rant coming on here, Jake. Is that what we're doing? I just don't Is this get the it. When you spend so much money. There were kids talking. Mm-hmm. There were, it was just ridiculous. Like, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, I want to rant, but I'm just so angry. Like, I don't understand. Like, give yourself two hours. Give yourself 90 minutes to just not be on your phone, to be whisked away to a world of wonder. Yeah. You know, I I hate that, too. And I I don't I'm going to probably play devil's advocate here now. I think what's happening is we've reverted a little bit. Like people who haven't hadn't been going out so much, you know, definitely not to the movies. Right. Um, I still need to go to a movie. I think it's been a while. And and. There's no, there's no, there's no etiquette technically before, even though you knew it, there's like yeah. unspoken etiquette. But, and, and so maybe there's, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know. I just, I, I don't want to be, you know, that guy. But if I were to run a theater, I would hire ushers that are in the theater, just sitting there watching the people watching the movie. And if they see that bright little screen come up, they confiscated or something like you got to put your phone in a locker before you go to the movie like just take yeah. a fucking break for 90 minutes of your life yeah. and just hey you just spent 40 dollars for tickets and popcorn and you're just gonna waste it by just scrolling on your phone keeping your face down the entire time like no you, you know what you don't understand jake is that when i'm in a movie theater i need to make sure that i'm live streaming it not the movie itself, but you know me watching because I need yeah. everybody need needs to know that because you know yeah. stuff revolves around me, and by stuff I mean the world. The world is moving <laughs> so fast. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, I, you know, and also Jake, I worked in a movie theater for over two years, mm-hmm. so I know a little bit of, of of at least at the one establishment. Did you ever? You kick do go in out? there. You, we only were supposed to go in and check like ushers go in 
twice a mo- per movie. You have to mm-hmm. mark them off. And it's like, you know, to be honest, we would try to make it quick. It's supposed to be like five to ten minutes. But I think we would sometimes sit there and just watch the movie for a few minutes. But you had to, like, walk across check make sure there's no obstructions you know for safety reasons safety and part of it was to make sure people weren't looking at their screens and if you see someone you are uh, able to go up and like talk to them but we're kind of lenient you know especially when you're like 20 and you're like i don't really care that much but but obviously someone would come out and complain right when it was excessive and we go in too so there there's some stuff up to account for that like right. or in place i should say not up but uh, in place to um you know take care of that if you can but it was twice a movie and that's like in, in 90 minutes it's only maybe five to ten minutes gets covered so i don't want to sound dramatic no go for it but it feels like, like this is the problem with america oh yeah definitely because yep. we're just i feel like it's such an entitled thing like you know, we're very individualistic. I'm, I'm going to text and yeah, we're individuals. We 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 pride ourselves on being that individual, but then with that, um, we get the blinders on and yeah. we think about. I wish I had blinders so I couldn't sometimes. see people's damn screens. There you go. Well, there hey, you know go. what? You just found out a solution to help you. It, you know, and that helps you as the individual to block yourself from that individual, and then the <sighs> other individuals can go fuck themselves because right. you know they're the ones who be, should be thinking of your ideas right now. Here's right the now. idea. I'm going to say patent it. pending. <laughs> Uh, COVID <laughs> blinder type movie theaters where movie you're blinders. in like a, a box almost and the person above you you can't see mm-hmm. them and mm-hmm. you're in like your own little box that's oh, the asshole blinder that's what yeah it the is. asshole blinder <laughs> I don't want to look at you, <laughs> you and about? then okay if you're on a date or something you have the option to move the thing back and you can mm-hmm. kind of alright we're going to start the old... a theater chain we're going to call yeah. them story shacks Oh, and that's we're gonna have cool. the movie the shacks. Asshole blinders. I don't know because the uh, yeah, movie be shack. Cause... Movie shack brought to you by Story Shack Podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Subsidiary of Globoco. <laughs> yeah, uh, for sure. So yeah, we'll just have partitions. That's all I want, just yeah, so that if this asshole over here is texting, that's fine for him. Whatever. I don't want to yeah. see it. I don't want him to ruin my experience. Yeah, oh, and you should... can put like your own personal little speakers in it for it. Oh. It's going to be expensive. Tickets are going to be outrageous. Yeah, they should do that anyways, it. just to like, because of the pandemic stuff, it, yeah. like just so that you don't have to get sick. Maybe yeah. it's just have, have those kinds of things installed, yeah. like clear ones, maybe with the option of like a little, a little shade. No, yeah. They can't see me doing a it little... up and down motion, but yeah, like we've all, yeah, we've so all been like... on trains. Okay? Yeah. We yeah, exactly. There you go. We know yeah. the little yeah. thing. Yeah. You got it. Uh, yeah. But can, Yeah. That's my rant. I I hope that everybody listening goes into this next year, can eventually see a movie, and mm-hmm. please not text. And if somebody does text, I give you full permission to slap their phones out of their hands, and hopefully it goes flying down and say what the hell's and the out of the idea? way, <laughs> and they can't go get it until after the movie, and you say that's what you get, that's what you deserve. <laughs> my brand new iPhone twenty six. V, it's in the, oh. My 17 inch screen. Oh. Go, <laughs> Who go. had their laptop with them? <laughs> go fudge yourself. Go Dude, fudge yourself. That's the next thing, though. If I see someone in a movie theater with their laptop because they're getting free Wi Fi and they're like working on a school project or right. something, I'm like, get, it, get out of here. My friends dragged me to a movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't ruin it for the rest of us. That's pretty much exactly. it. That that's the thing. Just be considerate. That's what you go to if you go to the movie theater theater and you, you that's what you want to do. I know I need I want to soon still. Like mm-hmm. I already said that. But be considerate. That's all yeah. of others. That's all. Not just yourself, of others. Yeah. That's all I want. I like it. Okay. That's good. I feel better. Yeah, that conversation may be more exciting. Then what we're gonna go into next? It's, that's not possible because <laughs> I, I know what I, we're going into next. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so we for this this week's episode, this movie, 1997 is when it came out. <clears throat> it starred George Clooney, Chris o- O'Donnell, yeah, right? O'Donnell, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Uma Thurman. That's right, everybody. It's the DC Batman and Robin. 
Yes. I'm gonna. This is uh, where you could put applause in, but I don't really want to applaud for it per se. Yeah, I mean, this I, is a movie of bad months. It's more of a groaning months of bad sound. movies. Yes, oh. there you go. Oh. Little hands on forehead thing. So, so, or do you want to guess the run I, tomatoes and I stuff? I do want to I mean, guess it. I mean, I part do. of it was you knew it was going to be pretty bad. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling it's like sixties and below for both of them. It's going to be my guess. I don't want to go too specific, but it feels like it's probably pretty low. I feel like there is, with the audience score, a little bit of nostalgia factor there. Right. Because I, I mean, I liked it when it came out. Oh, yeah. My wife said kid. she liked it, and then I'm watching it like... Yeah. When I was what? a kid and was going to buy the toys, yeah, mm-hmm. loved it. It was mm-hmm. great. And then I got older and realized that it's a ridiculously absurd movie. Yeah. The caliber is just... It's yeah. so low. It's is just not. Um, well, then I'll I'll just tell you on these ones. Then uh, critic and audience score are really close. The critics give it twelve percent, or at least it came up as twelve percent. Yeah, sixteen percent on audience. So okay, um, there's that nostalgia factor. It's about four percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I basically made a list of bad and good stuff. I was trying to like like likes and dislikes. Uh, I think we yeah. did that. All right, that's how I took my notes for last month. Then uh, the bad. Bad side's longer, so I don't know where right. I should start. Um, uh, well, let's start with what we liked. How about okay. that? Okay, Because sure. there were some things that I liked. Mm-hmm. And I've got some defenses that I've read about what I didn't like. Oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, I, I'll start. So, the one thing I realized about this is it's called Batman and Robin. Mm-hmm. But it's not... Oh, I'm starting with things that I hate. I didn't want to do that. Okay. So, <laughs> it's almost hard not to, man. It's okay. That's true. Okay, so it's called Batman and Robin, but it's not really about Batman and Robin. If you look uh. at them as characters, nothing really happens with them at all. It's all about the villains. Like, Alfred okay. is doing kind of something. Yeah. Alfred has his illness or whatever. Batgirl mm-hmm. comes in and does her little thing. Mm-hmm. And the villains start as one thing and then transform into another except Mr. Freeze but one of my favorite parts about it is Mr. Freeze when he's in the cell and he's got the little toy the little ballerina or whatever that he makes and I actually really liked Arnold in that role playing that character because that was my like he's he's got a lot of heart he's got a lot of like heart to it and Mm -hmm. it's not just like an evil villain kind of thing they gave him some depth and yes, exactly. That's one thing. Yep. That's missing from both Batman and Robin. Yep. It's more that's what it is. They're the too villains. flat. They're too yeah. flat of characters. And it's like, but it's Batman. Like, there's so much that you could have done, and not just because we got Christopher Nolan stuff eight years later, right. but like in in. Tim Burton was doing it with the other ones too. Yeah. So it's like just to, I get that Batman Forever, the movie that came before this was a bit lighter mm-hmm. and it's going kind of more comic y. But yeah. then this definitely went even further. And just like how most sequels to stuff end up being not as good, right. it's, that's just what ended up happening here. Yeah. And, and yes, I agree. If I can talk about Arnold too. Yeah. It's, absolutely. it's the character because of everything you said that, that, that Mr. Freeze character has some depth with the wife and then and then at the end you don't feel like you feel like he's given the chance still to do his research to save her. So that feels right. that feels good to me and like some closure there because of it. Also I was thinking about cuz the year and the timing and stuff. I know Arnold Schwarzenegger was I love Predator. We did Predator, right? You know, there's the Twins movies, Junior, and where it gets a little ridiculous. But, like, he was branching off into, like, these other roles. Right. And then this one, his delivery of the lines, the lines suck. But his delivery being, like, just over the top enough sometimes was very villainy, which I think worked for the tone. Yeah. And it seemed like a good performance. Like, he was actually trying to act. Yeah. And, and... And the, but then in comparison to most of the other actors in there that weren't really acting, George Clooney included, I felt like. Oh, yeah. Not to bash on him, but he's, I feel like, I thought he was really good. And I, I told my wife, I was like, I think they just didn't pay him enough right. to really like, get into it. And the writing was bad. Yeah. Like, I don't, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, the puns were, the puns, puns were a lot. Ice puns. Too but many. he still manages to like play it off 
Mm -hmm. He still does a really good job. And then that scene when he's in the cell, just like you kind of feel for him a little bit and he's more Mm -hmm. of a victim than he is the villain. It felt almost kind of like a, like a play. Yeah. I've said this before, but I'm thinking of when he was in the cell the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, And then he walks away and then he falls down because he can't, he needs, and he crawls back and he's like staring up. It looked like a little moment from a play Yeah, that it actually, you know, seemed good. (laughs) I don't know what else to say on it. I, and my other like that I wrote down, I was trying to come up with a third one, but my uh, second one, Bane's lines, the timing of Bane's lines, Mm -hmm. even though they're a little cheesy or cheeky, I don't know, whatever you want to call it for that word. Mm -hmm. it, It, it seemed to work just enough. Right. I don't know why. Like, like they didn't make him talk too much. Um, the the character and all that stuff was kind of is kind of ridiculous. But that I was trying to look for, you know, silver lining or whatever you want yeah. to say for his. Yeah. And I mean, Uma Thurman. I thought she did a great job. Really, I didn't. I disagree. I mean, it wasn't the best job. She's very where Arnold's a little bit over the top. She's yeah. definitely way over the top with it well that's a good point i should say i would rank it'd be arnold and then her Mm -hmm. um acting uh performance wise uh maybe george clooney chris o'donnell's was pretty bad and then alicia silverstone's like delivery of stuff was so bad so i'm like i can't remember her being like a good actor or anything yeah i don't know so (laughs) here's my defense of some of the bad. Okay. Because I think I, I think our bads will be a shared yeah. kind of confluence. There's just Everything a lo- we didn't mention. Yeah, <laughs> so. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Batman's flat. I, I looked at the IMDb trivia. Yeah. You Joel, know he's not flat-chested, though, because no. you can see those nips you can in the see suit. Those nips. I'm just saying. Just saying. Okay. I watch... I, I read the IMDb trivia... And Joel Schumacher, the director, Mm -hmm. wanted to do different things, but the studio kind of stepped in, and Mm -hmm. it's Batman, it's a big comic property, Mm -hmm. they wanted to sell toys. I think I did read that somewhere. So a lot of it came with, you know, he's got like a new ice bat suit at the end, and it's like, of course he does, because that's what he's going to use, that's what they're going to use to sell the toys. Toys, yeah. Mr. Freeze has all these... You know, I think I had a Mr. Freeze and, toy. Not so. Yeah, I remember watching the commercials. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And it's just it was overtaken by propaganda Greed. and selling Greed. things and sponsorships. Yeah. He's got a Batman American Express card. Yeah, I know that that part. That's so bad. Like, the the just the they were okay another thing i was reading which is what i felt like i felt like the con- wait did, were you done making that yeah, yeah 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 oh, okay the the um the comic book feel of it mm-hmm. does feel like it's something out of the 60s which was something i did read was they're saying you no know, adam west batman where it's just all of a sudden he clicks they click their heels and the skates come out of their boots right it felt yeah. like those props and stuff i was like it does and that that's what i get and i know they were kind of doing that tone in the previous movie but they just went over the top yeah. again and and so it, it felt too mixed up from what i remember maybe at the time when it came out it seemed to make more sense and maybe that's why but I've watched this movie a handful of times since yeah. it came out, and I, every time I watch it, it seems like it's worse and worse. It just seems very <laughs> campy. Yeah, and, and I like some campy stuff, so I yeah. don't. I don't know what to. I don't. I. D- but you know, I've watched a lot of Joel Schumacher movies. Yeah, and he knows how to make a movie. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of this was the studio just trying to make an easy buck. That's what I'm saying is I think they didn't pay George Clooney enough because he's a good actor. I know Uma Thurman's a good actor. Chris O'Donnell's like been kind of okay. Yeah. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's a, a big name. It was bad. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he it was, was bad yeah. writing and stuff. But the, the, I, yeah. the dynamic between them in this movie was just crazy. Like, see, it was hard to believe. I think that's this what's... woman. This woman comes between them basically. Yeah, and they're objectifying her too much. I don't know. Maybe it just didn't age that well. Too. Yeah, that's Some also of the stuff possible. In it. I don't know. I feel like with Batman Forever, we had 
you know, the Dick Grayson story and he mm-hmm. loses his parents and all that kind of stuff. There was nice that was backstory. Good. That was, yeah, yeah, a nice little backstory to have Robin come in. And then with Batman and Robin, we don't care about Batman and Robin at all. The entire yeah. story just revolves around the villains. We're just yeah. missing this, the actual Batman element. And then Alfred happens to have the same disease. God, that I his, know, that's one of my things. And it's like... And and they knew that Mr. Free, uh, Freeze had like... Um, figured out how to like at that stage like right. cure it and then all of a sudden like a day later it seems like he's fine because he took the two things and or whatever i know diamonds are referred to as ice yeah but they're not actually like have any cold properties that he would need to like run his suit yeah unless he's got some mechanism that can convert it somehow i don't know that's my there's a suspension of disbelief there for sure to make it like make sense but you're right that's that's actually pretty bad um the the the, so the one-liners the dialogue oh my god my and i told my wife she was laughing i i showed her the intro again because she's like i love this movie and like like okay and like i did too but like you gotta watch the part like they suit up and you see the butt jiggle. Yeah, you see, like what I'm just like what? Shot? And then and then I was I was like, watch this. Listen to the first line, and he's like, "Why can I have a car or whatever the hell right. he Kicks says?" And I'm like, car. "Why is that the first line?" Right. And it's the Batman and Robin movie. That's Batman and Robin. And then, like you said, they don't even focus on them at all. Which, again, pointing back to Batman Forever, they did the same thing. You had the Riddler and Two Face, yeah. like. They had they a lot of villains, but it felt, before. it felt more balanced. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you had the Dick Grayson backstory, like you mentioned. So it's like, but I, and so I have a, I only wrote one thing, but I was thinking about missed opportunities in this movie. Like, how can it have been improved if you just done something different? And some of the different stuff is just don't do it. Yeah. You know, um, the, the ice puns, there were too many. Yeah. You could have done like one or two, and then Batman does a pun like at the end of the movie, which is kind of cool because it does that kind of like payoff thing where Mr. Freeze is giving them, then Batman right. gives one at like a good time. Like yeah. the timing would just feel okay to do. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I like feel like Poison Ivy got like cat like caught in her own thing at the end. It felt lame. She was trying to be kind of like the seductress, like uh, environmentalist, right. strong woman character, female character, and then she just it fell short for me mm-hmm. and so i feel like there you could have done something there to make that better make her like a stronger villain because right. i i she is supposed to be mother nature basically right and you could really play it and I, they just lean they lean too much in the wrong ways right. that's what it was you know what i mean <laughs> like, okay yeah. can i can i try and improvise a reboot because i, sure. I yeah, didn't think it. about it but now that you're mm-hmm. saying things my mind's kind of going yeah so you have the internal conflict between Batman and Robin and Robin wanting to kind of be his own hero, but he's stuck being the sidekick. Mm-hmm. So you've got a conflict there. He's still going to these galas and stuff with Bruce. Bruce has this beautiful wife, whatever. Poison Ivy comes in as like just a normal scientist woman to mm-hmm. him. And we don't really know that she's like Poison Ivy yet or that she's gone through all this stuff and she's just kind of like infiltrating Robin or, you know, is just at this party doing something. They meet somewhere and, I don't know, a lot of stuff goes on with Freeze and Ivy and kind of would happen in the story. But somehow they end up kind of like getting Robin away from Batman Mm-hmm. And then you've got that conflict there that Robin's kind of turning into a bad guy, a villain. So there's the conflict between Batman and Robin. And then maybe in the kind of mix of things, Freeze manages to kill Robin or something. And you just have more of the conflict revolve around them rather than it just being all about the villains. Like, you can still kind of put in mm-hmm. the side story of him and his wife. And you can put in, you know... I don't really think you need the side story of Poison Ivy and how she becomes Poison Ivy. You can just kind of explain that. Yeah. But just kind of have the villains try and pull apart Batman and Robin. Yeah. And rather than... Because they did a little bit with her trying to go between them both, but it didn't really... Yeah. 
they caught just, on to it really fast. And yeah, a lot of it just fell flat. And I, I think I think that sounds good. There's um, because making it ba- Batman and Robin, I get there's the it, it just seemed like Robin was too whiny. Yeah. About like not getting that, but I get like what they're going for. Like you could stuck with something like that where what's like, kind of want more. I want the limelight a little bit more. Yeah. And, and then that could have pulled them away. Like you said, I like that. Um, and then, yeah, if you just already had Ivy established, the only reason why showing those stuff they showed makes sense is so that she sees the one beaker or whatever that says Wayne Enterprises. So she right. knows to go like bug Bruce Wayne, yeah, but, she- but you could have just had like, Hey, all this, um, sludge or whatever right. is being dumped into this way and this is where i've i've been kind of like yeah. keeping some of my pl- she, whatever and and like, you see the thing there it's like not it the didn't Riddler, have to be this whole... she's an employee at wayne and enterprises yeah. or whatever and she's just at this gala she ends up talking to robin mm-hmm. and then kind of slowly infiltrates her way through that and yeah. you maybe cut... they didn't want to do the same thing as much but they, they still kind of did but yeah. then they changed it a little but they should but, they could missed opportunity still but you got <laughs> And then you you got you got to cut back, girl. I know that didn't, that didn't. Except I will say her like her like her lines and delivery and stuff was pretty bad to me in my yeah. opinion. Um, but I did feel like she fit the stronger female role at yeah. the very end a little bit better. If, She's but definitely then it, not it, a damsel it was, it was like stress. a little yes, exactly. It was yeah. a little too little, too late though. I felt like except yeah. for the oh, I'm sneaking off and doing the motorcycle racing, which right. is kind of cool in a way, but. Again, with all that like comic-y feel with the thing, it's just like... just felt like there was too much going on with everything. And there not was, enough of what it needed. They to. were hanging by his foot on the like rebar. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, well, good thing he happened to catch himself that way. I don't think right. he really tried to. Right. So by accident, he's still alive. And then I'm going to take my helmet off in the middle of holding you with one hand. Right. Don't pull her the, uh, you have to get your stupid lines in, your stupid one-liner type things. Like, oh, you hang out here? <laughs> Is right. this where you're hanging out? <laughs> so, oh. yeah. It's so bad. Uh, it's so, it's thing, so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> The one of the most ridiculous parts for me is just seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger in like a lab coat. I know. In that it's one, like, oh, like what the... did he get in with a football scholarship? Like, <laughs> yeah. How did he? he he's the thing a is, giant he, man. He's got as being a uh, bald person, he makes for a good shaped head there. That's what yeah. I always um, think is 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 nice because not everybody has has good shaped heads yeah. for bald, baldness. So and good I for feel him. Like... I, I don't know. He's, I mean, he's known for, you know, he's known for one-liners and kind of being Terminator and all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Right. So I think like his, his, uh, his acting with the one-liners and stuff, it just kind of fits with him. Like it doesn't feel that over the top. That's, that's good. It plays his character. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I really liked his performance in it. He was the saving mm-hmm. grace for me while I was kind of struggling through watching it. Yeah, because he actually felt like he had some depth to it and was putting in the effort where I feel like a lot of other areas they just weren't. Depth, as in like like where maybe like cold Arctic regions would be, you know, like. You know where ice and stuff is. You don't have to do this. If, no, okay. I thought you I, don't have to do this. No, I was gonna placate to the masses of uh, uh, and, Mr. Freeze fans out Bane there. I don't know. <laughs> kind of terrible. I know it's, it's a terrible Bane. I'm I'm glad we got the Tom Hardy one. That was pretty yeah. cool, at least. Because um, that's apparently what he's more like in the comics or mm. the TV show or whatever. He was kind of more intelligent and less. Mm-hmm. Rawr, rawr, yeah, it was which, like an idiot Hulk. And or like, something. It's his, like what? so the big like, their big defeat was just very easily. I know plucking those tubes There's out so of the back things. of his head. It, this is what happens when you put more and more villains in it. You yeah. have to like dispatch of them a lot quicker to yeah. save screen time. <laughs> like, but it's like okay, yeah. Could have just had him like get knocked off a, a ledge or something. And right. Actually, that'd be even better. Knocked off and the things get pulled out. Just they happen to, which would, is kind of crappy too, but. I don't know, like. But here, here is my also my other saving grace for this terrible, terrible movie. Mm-hmm. It killed the franchise to the point that nothing could happen for ten years, and, and then we, we got one of the best. I know 
Batman trilogy storylines in movies. Movies, yeah. And then that also led the way for, I don't want to say the Ben Affleck one, because I'm not, eh, whatever. Yeah. We'll get into that some other time. But oh, I'm very yeah. excited about the new one coming out. Yeah, I saw, and I heard this before, and then I was on the wiki real quick, and it said that Michael Keaton is set to reprise his role. Yeah. In um in The Flash and Batgirl yep. this year. So that could be interesting. That'd be cool because yeah. he's a good actor, and he's even the stuff he's been doing. But yeah, that's all. That's all I've got for Batman and Robin. Any any parting words? The last worst thing I didn't write this down, but I thought of it because of the, the nipples. stupid stuff. The nipples are pretty bad, man. And then no, and then here's the thing. I told my wife they didn't put nipples on the Batgirl suit. I was like, so is it like as if they're still covered? Like if you were on a beach, so this mm-hmm. is what you look like abs in this, and then she had her whatever it looked like for her suit i'm like what who designed these things like honestly that's not the thing i was mentioned this there were some sound effects that i was thinking about there was the i think when she took over the turkish bathhouse thing mm-hmm. and the guys got tossed or whatever or maybe it was like ice slipping or whatever but right. someone slipped or got tossed and there was that like cartoony yeah. yeah and i was like what that totally just took me out of it i'm like they have that in here I don't, wh- what? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I love that their their hideout is this big ice cream factory. Or yeah, something. I know. Like, yeah, and it's like, and that's not obvious how are you either. Hiding? Yeah, it's, yeah. I wonder how they found him. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, I don't know. Besides, like some of the character choices, uh, that I, that that's that's all the main things. Yeah. About why this movie was so terrible. Yeah. And I almost feel like this is what the podcast should turn into is just us shitting on movies only. Yeah. <laughs> Not talking about and then trying to find the redeeming parts. Yeah. Now I mean, we've been I, doing kind of like, like oh, is it good, bad, or whatever. Oh, I really like this movie. And then right. yeah. yeah. But then yeah, also, that's about it. But then also with the good ones, we can mm-hmm. kinda take those down a peg too and figure out what we don't like and That's a good point. Be more critical of them. Yeah. And and kind of quell our are maybe nostalgia for some and just like likeness like figure out what works and what doesn't you 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 good on batman yeah yeah me too are we how does he have so much in that belt yeah like it just seems ridiculous he's got a laser he's got grappling hook he's got skates in his where are the skates you label skates hiding are they in his feet you label anything utility and it means it can do anything utility knives I use that to like open my my milk cartons sometimes, you know. You who, shouldn't do that, but I do that. Okay. So who do they? Who do they? Who pays that Amex bill? Bruce Wayne, of course. <laughs> but well, but then the but, dead giveaway. Well, yeah, no, that's the problem. Well, that's why that's him bidding ten million dollars or whatever mm-hmm. is like. Do they really think Batman has that much money? Because who else in Gotham would have that kind of right. money besides Bruce Wayne? Like a this handful one of people? superhero that's confined like, to this one city. Like, are you kidding me? It was so it's so bad. And then and he's like just thinking, I'm gonna take your money and pay for it. It's like, are you kidding me? Like they were so I part of the point was to make him so like delirious or whatever. Right. Delusional maybe is a better word, but yeah. So January's kind of known throughout the movie community as the the time that studios are releasing their their worst. I'm not saying every movie that comes out in January is terrible, but a lot of them are because the studios don't need to make money at the beginning of the year, so they just awards and stuff are you know yeah, better to do at the end of the year. Yeah, when you're going their for money that, makers so yeah. and stuff happen in the summer mm-hmm. to the end of the year. The first part of the year they're not getting a whole bunch, so. This January, we're going through the some of the worst movies that you can probably ever watch and see. Uh, what do we? Which one are we doing next week? Zach? It'll be Jack and Jill, an Adam Sandler movie that is starring bad. Adam Sandler and Adam and Sandler. Adam Sandler. Yeah, he plays two roles, trying to um, imitate Eddie Murphy, I suppose, and Martin Lawrence. Yeah. Right, and then we'll see how that goes. Yeah. All right, see you next week, everybody.